Let's see what the fuck happens. Shout out Paul the Almighty or shout out Paul the Almighty. I feel like this is a fucking a full circle, my nigga. Of course it's going on that side of the channel, bro. Hey, second channel niggas, bro. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? A nigga DM me like, bro, I didn't even know you made video games. What the fuck? I've been watching the second channel this whole time. And that's so fire to me. Let's see what the fuck happens, bro. Let's see this shit. Change the layout of what? Of what? Aw, oh, damn. It is going on the second channel. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't care. I go into my past. I go into controversy. What the hell? And I also debunk very serious lies about me, including by involving the police, legal teams, and extensive research. It will get uncomfortable. I will get into details of my life that you probably don't want to hear, and I don't. I'm not going to lie to you. We all want to hear this shit. Yeah, that nigga was fat as fuck. <laughs> that nigga was fat as shit, bro. Turn it up, turn it up. That's how loud this nigga just has that shit, bro. Unfortunately, bro. This is full fucking volume, bro. So I just won't speak. I won't speak. I won't speak. I particularly want to share either, but it feels necessary given the circumstances. Matter of fact... Oh, I hate this shit, my nigga. I'm gonna be cold as fuck, but I need to turn off my heater. Hold up. I gotta make this room as quiet as fucking possible. It's about to get freezing in here. The shit that you do for fucking content, my nigga, on some real shit. Oh, it's about to get so cold inside here, bro. Alright, there should be no sound going on. Won't speak the biggest yapper of all time. Turn it up for us on OBS, nigga. It's as far as it fucking goes, bro. It's as far as it goes. And honesty and truth is my top priority. As you guys have probably noticed, I took a long break from YouTube, and since the face reveal, I've hardly really uploaded. And I've really focused on other things and separated myself from a lot of the stuff I was doing before. You may think that this was due to the hate from the face reveal, or for other reasons, but really there was something else that happened. There you go, closed caption. And it really made me step back from what I was doing and have a lot less passion. If you've been on the internet recently, you've probably heard or seen some pretty crazy stuff about me. Whether it's the voice actor- It's like anytime we go on that shit, I see something, bro. Anytime I go on that shit, I see somebody talking about this nigga. Every single fucking time, bro. Closed caption. Yes, yes, yes. I know the nigga turned it down as quiet as possible so niggas couldn't react to this shit, bro. The nigga's whispering. <laughs> he wanted to make sure nobody could hear it, my nigga. He knew we were about to come on here and react to this, bro. Every time on God. He said, can you turn yourself down? Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Hey, is this, is this, is this quiet enough for you niggas? Director of Gumball attacking me or accusations against me regarding grooming. You've probably heard a lot of pretty crazy stuff. I thought it's extremely important for me to make this video and provide as much information as I can. And I just want to right off the bat state as clearly as I can that these allegations are not true. I plan on going to extreme detail. Hey, that's Cap, bro. That is Cap. 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 If you niggas know, I did a full video literally deep diving this nigga. Seeing what the fuck was real, what the fuck was fake, what exactly was going on. <laughs> and we found so much stuff in that one goddamn video, bro. Failed to prove that in this video. And to all the people that are spreading lies, fabricating stories, and making false accusations for fun, or because they think it's funny. I don't care. I'm excited. That's like 10 accounts! This is not funny. This is not a joke. This is people's lives, ranging from my own, my family, my employees, to actual victims that stories won't be heard or believed in the future because of this. I understand that some things in this video are much more important than others, so I split this video up into chapters. And you can skip to and watch the parts that are most important to you. I will say that everything in this video is very relevant. I think they're all vital topics to include because they help clear up my character. So yeah, the video has chapters, and if you want what to see the there's a pin comment. And again, I... Nigga, show your face! Show your damn face, my nigga. I don't want to see that dumbass scribble knot. I don't want to see that dumbass scribble knot whenever you fucking talking about pedophilia charges. What is wrong with this nigga? What is going on right now, bro? Oh my god. Ain't nobody trying to see that bullshit-ass fucking... Uh, uh, Stickman, Henry Stickman, yeah, Henry yeah. Stickman. What is going on, man? Chapters, and if you want to skip around, there's a pinned comment. And again, I realize that nothing in this video is as important as me talking about serious allegations, so I've made it really easy to skip ahead to whatever is most important to you. Just because there's other stuff doesn't mean anything is less important. Modern Why do you put the fucking the city of New York in the background? Now, every single one of you New York niggas, I ain't gonna hold you. Y'all on fucking, y'all on fraud watch. Y'all on fraud watch. Every single NYC nigga inside on, here. But every dollar will go to a charity that's linked in the description. Otherwise, I want to start with the biggest lot is on, but every dollar will go to a charity because there's other stuff doesn't mean anything is less important monetization on this video is on but every dollar will go to a charity that's linked in the description Although what charity bro I i'm tired of niggas getting this fucking lie off I, I genuinely am bro i genuinely am what what the fuck what are you donating anything to charity for bro what just don't turn it on niggas be lying bro I i'm gonna tell you niggas a little secret in the youtube game bro a little secret in the YouTube game. 
If a nigga says he's donating money to charity, he don't specify how much he's donating to charity. He's not giving 100% to that shit, nigga. Maybe 40, maybe 30. Them niggas might see a smooth 50,000 out of the everything he made off this fucking video, bro. Y'all niggas think for as long as this video stays up throughout history that he's always gonna donate this money from this video to charity? You can't even find out what the fuck funds you get from a certain video to charity, bro. What do they be talking about, bro? We get a we get a huge check with everything put into one thing, but we don't get oh you get a hundred dollars for this video, two hundred for this video. Like no, man. Otherwise, I want to start with the biggest lie I have ever told. The face leak photo was me. Look at that of course, fat from fuck. When I was really young, and I've lost a lot of weight since then, and it wasn't at all representative of what I look like now. But it was me. Obviously, I said many times that it wasn't, and a lot of people have and still do use that against me to say that I'm dishonest. But the reason I lied about that is because of the face reveal. I'd been planning the face reveal for years. I sacrificed so much. No, you didn't. Side. You lie. You lied so you can get your fucking weight in order, nigga. He? <laughs> Why is he? He's lying in the truth video. He's lying in the truth video, bro. You wanted to go work out. And nigga's like, oh, I just wanted to tell y'all because I wanted to go get my... Uh, like, no, nigga. You wanted to go lose weight first. I've been avoiding cameras for so no long. No way. I had covers on all my windows. And even to go to the dentist, I left hiding in the back of a car and went to a different state. Yes, I was paranoid. This nigga think he Madonna or some shit. Away from me. Whatever I had to do to make sure that moment was suspenseful and exciting, I'm sure I would have done. And if anything, the face leak photo probably ended up creating more suspense and excitement to see if I was lying or if I actually looked like the leaked picture. Now, of course, there was a lot of personal information attached to the leaked picture. How it was found, where it was leaked from so that definitely contributed to why i lied about it i didn't lie because i was <laughs> ugly or it's just the fact that we knew <laughs> as soon as this nigga showed his face anybody with like more than two brain cells was like nigga that's you we know who the fuck <laughs> we know what you look like it's just a fat version of you bro what are you Where talking about from? that nigga docks his whole goddamn school wasn't playing not one bit of soccer nigga on the bench eating popcorn that definitely contributed to why i lied about it i didn't lie because i was ugly or because i was overweight or anything like that and every time i talked about the leaked picture i always mentioned that i the white with my EP. The past and that it's disheartening to see people make fun of the poor kid for that which obviously i was the poor kid and i think that's something i'm willing to admit now because i face reveal. <laughs> i'm not risking that big moment anymore and i also feel much more <laughs> them three niggas laughing will forever just tank this niggas fucking personality forever bro with them three the video of them niggas on discord that made that sound <laughs> that shit will live forever because those four niggas i don't even know who the fuck those niggas are bro but the niggas that saw his face and was like and started laughing that shit was so fucking funny bro and will always be funny comfortable about my personal information and how i look and oogla ball ass nigga oogla ball ass nigga i was playing a minecraft tournament and someone called the swat team on me dream is afk i'm clear here um I was put in handcuffs on my front lawn. Who is that nigga? Rifles pointing at me. And I was pretty much swatted from that day on almost <laughs> daily. To the point where the reason... Another fucking lie, bro. I've seen plenty of black niggas get squatted. If them niggas don't even got rifles pointed at them on their hands and knees begging to God, if they don't even got that shit happening, nigga, it definitely wasn't happening to your ass at all, bro. Isn't moved in with You're wearing a knitted beanie. ...to answer the door when police showed up. Because people started camping outside with cameras to try and reveal my face, and I needed someone else to answer the door. Crimson when chin ass nigga. Me thought that they had the wrong address. My family ended up getting swatted, and my mom answered the door thinking that it was what the fuck? my little sister. They were held at gunpoint with police helicopters circling the neighborhood. People. Mm, my house. People I hate this my nigga. Family's house. The first time I ever got swatted, I made sure not to mention it at all. Funnily enough, I actually got interviewed by a SWAT team member while I was muted and playing Minecraft parkour with the SWAT officer right next to me. But yeah, it's just all to show that even though I was very- You just said you're on your hands and knees! It was much more about the fact that there was so much personal information attached to the picture, and I wanted as much separation from it as possible. It had nothing to do with how I look. I'm very proud of my weight loss story, and I was never ashamed about it at all. I think that it's very encouraging to see people accomplish weight loss. I did it all naturally. I lost hundreds of pounds. You have not- Oh my fucking god, man. I hate these fucking egotistic ass niggas. Is this nigga really hyping himself up during this fucking truth video? I'm actually very proud of myself that I was able to lose so much weight and I actually look very good now, to, you know, debating on how I used to look. Like, nigga, what are you talking about, bro? Nigga, get to the, get to the, 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 the 16 year old saying that you groom them seen me at my heaviest and it's one of those things that i think is very encouraging the fuck is that dr phil people so it's a what the hell is that nigga in future but in that moment it was not the right time to tell it i feel like right now it's still kind of uncomfortable to talk about it but it's annoying seeing the Amazing. same damn picture so here's some other pictures of me from before i lost weight just so there's more variety
Now moving on to one of the most what? controversies, the cheating scandal. I'm going to be pretty concise with this one because it's been covered a million <laughs> times and most... Why, bro? Big Bruce ass nigga. Why'd he do that? Uh, oh my god, look at that. Look. He, he wanted niggas to get bored before he got to the pedophilia. I, I guarantee that's the fucking end of the video, bro. He wanted niggas to be like, okay, whatever, and click off the shit before he got to that part. Most of you were probably pretty sick of hearing about it, but it's still really important to talk about. It's one of the most frequent. Nigga talking about speed run. I don't give a fuck about no damn speed running, nigga. Make up a fake astrophysicist to lie. I don't care. Is very different. <laughs> Get to the next chapter. The next thing I'm going to talk about is a pretty big one that you might not have heard about, but it's a pretty. Y'all want to hear about the speed running allegations? Am I am I bugging for skipping? He did not glow up. No, no, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you. Now, if you don't know who Manatreat is, Manatreat what is the fuck? That I added to my server, the Dream SMP, a couple years ago. They were anonymous like me, and they had a very short career. There was a thread made about Manatreat saying that they doxxed him and that he was an IRL friend of mine, had been charged with domestic violence, and that I was trying to hide it. Manatreat was removed from the SMP by me. All of his accounts were deleted, and I made a statement talking about how I don't support domestic violence. I wasn't aware of any domestic violence, and that, Duh. due to how complicated the situation was, I decided to remove Manatreat from the SMP. Also, this nigga really is just touching every single thing nobody gives a fuck about. I don't even know who the fuck Mana Ray is. So strongly alluded to the fact that the docs information was incorrect. Everything I just said was who the true, fuck is Man Ray? The, fact that the nigga off SpongeBob? What is I going on? Manatreed. I made the accounts. I grew up with him. His grandparents were like what my the grandparents. Fuck? He was like family to me. The criticism I get to this day related to this is that I intentionally housed and hid an abuser. Because Manatreed was faceless and anonymous like me, people said that it was planned deliberately in order to hide a domestic violence charge. This is not true. In late 2020, <laughs> who the fuck is he? <laughs> <struggling> <laughs> I've been in multiple <laughs> <laughs> hey bro i'm not gonna lie to you at all i'm skipping any part that i don't give a fuck about like i'm not just gonna i'm not just gonna sit here and watch bullshit bro if you want to go to certain parts go watch that shit i highly recommend niggas get the full information about shit but if it's a part i don't give a fuck about, you be talking about all right let's go ahead and talk about our cat like nigga what what cat man what cat what are you talking about i don't give a fuck about miss muffins before I jump into the most important things I'm going to address, I want to talk about something that's come up a lot due to these allegations, and something that's commonly said to give credibility to me being a bad or weird person. I'm going to play a clip from Moist Critical, who talked about the allegations pretty neutrally to his credit. But while talking about them, he said this. Dream's audience has always been on the younger side of things, and yet Dream constantly engages with them in very inappropriate ways, such as like posting thirst traps. He does post thirst traps. Thank you, now He's we get into the meat and potatoes. fans are children. So shout out Moist, shout out Moist. I think a lot of people start to take them at face value because they're like, oh, that, that sounds like the dream that I know. Uh, you know, this sounds like something dream might do, so it's probably true. Even though right now, a lot of the evidence backing it up isn't the strongest. I wish Moist now, a plentiful I life. This, I just want to ask that if you're watching this and you share the same opinion, try and give me the benefit of doubt. Genuinely listen to what I have to say and discard your preconceived biases. Because yeah, if you think someone's creepy and then they're accused of being a creep, it clearly changes how you think. So I'm gonna break down multiple things that Charlie said because I respect him. I respect his opinion. I think he's a super reasonable guy. Nigga ain't seen not one, one video. One he clicked the most recent videos to make it look like he's actually a fan of this nigga. Bro, there's not any red bars on anything here, bro. I'm actually a fan of this guy. He's only seen two videos. Thirst traps. He does post thirst traps. That's the first thing I'm gonna talk about. Uniquely, because I didn't reveal my face until last year, I can actually pretty reasonably show you every photo and video of myself that I've ever posted. Please, no more photos of you. Oh my god, man, stop! It's important to note that what you post on something like Snapchat is very different than something you'd post on Instagram or Twitter. Snapchat runs ads every five or six photos and encourages you to post upwards of 100 photos or videos a day to have the... If you got Snapchat... And you posting 200 videos a day, my nigga. I'm unfriending you. This nigga posting lizards on plum. Oh my fucking god, man. What is going on, bro? Why'd he post that? Who was that, Mrs. Kipling? Oh my god, I hate this nigga, bro. They only last 24 hours like an Instagram story. So on Snapchat, you kind of just spam anything. So for me, it's silly filters, my cat. Whatever food I'm eating that day, I get a hair. That nigga posted it's his leg. It's much easier to take one silly photo from Snapchat out of context and make it out to be something that it's not. On top of that, there's a lot of fake accounts that I think people fall for all the time. They no, don't, don't start that. Don't start that. Don't start that. What the fuck? <laughs> 
<laughs> bro, that's crazy. This dream was Taylor, nigga. He be on he be on Twitter wilding the fuck out, bro. Oh my god. Uh, Dream was tailing be going crazy on Twitter. Have y'all seen this nigga, bro? <laughs> he be just posting anything. He likes they get. There's a lot of people that casually scroll Twitter and think their posts are mine. There's one Back to normal is insane. Popular and verified before it was suspended. It posted tweets like this and this <laughs> and this. These are just completely normal photos I posted. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, Dream was Taylor was crazy. People, including people that have made pretty big videos about me. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if Charlie saw this account a couple times and thought its tweets were mine. A lot of people... No, don't, don't, don't try to put that on him. What? He didn't even address anything, bro. What? He said, I post a lot of thirst chats, but Dream, but Moist Critical probably saw somebody else's account. That's all he had to say about that? But he spent five whole minutes on Man Ray? also say stuff like this i don't know why he still uses snapchat it's still kind of weird i told you if you're a grown man using snapchat which i think is super reasonable to think if you don't know that there's creator accounts now that work very differently to normal snapchat accounts you can promote stuff to millions of people through snapchat's algorithm and even as of recently you can make a lot of money obviously encouraging you to move on bro stupid photo you took i mean i hardly even log into my snapchat myself and even have someone else completely run the account because there's a manager account feature where i can just post from my personal snap and never even see any of the messages i also sometimes have people say that i'm weird because of fan art account likes from my fan art account so i just want to clarify i'm not the one behind 99% of the likes. I've never made that public because it is beneficial. All right, one one comment, one comment, one comment. Why do we give a fuck about anything that he is saying right now in this one specific section? He was supposed to be addressing why do you post thirst traps knowing your fan base is under the age of 18? And this nigga's talking about, yeah, Most Critical made a video about that, and he probably saw this one account on Twitter, and why should a grown man really be using Snapchat? Well, because Snapchat gives away ads for millions and millions of dollars, and, you know, I'm making good, like, what are you talking about, man? This nigga threw the question out there, and now is answering every single other plot point like a goddamn brainstorm. Nigga, answer the main thing. No way, bro. Yes, diverting the topic is crazy. Nigga, you introduced the question. Answer it artist for people to think that it's me every time but again when it's being used against me to say i'm creepy i have to clarify hi so i've ran dreams public snapchat since january 2022 there's nothing weird and he doesn't really even log into it um i also run his fan art account and have been nigga got a fucking underage girl to run a snapchat account bro you're not you're not escaping the allegations man she's like 15 yeah, actually, I've been running, uh, yeah, yeah, like, what, what the fuck? Since January 2022 as well. I'm good friends with Dream and the Dream team, so he thought I'd be a good pick to run it. I mostly just like and retweet art. I'm banished from replying. Sometimes people will call him creepy for stupid stuff that I've liked, and I've never really taken it seriously because I just think what's being- She's held at gunpoint? Like, ENF kissing art or something, because I'm their friend, and it makes me laugh. Hey, right, nigga, who is this little-ass kid talking to us right now, bro? Creepy or weird. Luke? really bad because he's definitely not. There's been times that he He's messaged me and told me to unlike something or asked why I was on a DNF liking spree. And he's definitely a silly guy, but people shouldn't use me liking art that I found funny or just thought this is her job. By the way, keep that in mind. I can still be more careful about what's liked on the account, though. And I also can re clarify my boundaries, which I do at the end of this video. But I will just say here that I have never supported not safe for work art of minors or from minors. I think that that's weird and gross. And I clarify my boundaries on myself later in the video. But generally, it's just I don't want anything weird drawn of me. I also later have the person who used to run the account back into yeah, you can say that as much as you want nigga but they're still gonna do it like that has nothing to do with him saying don't do it niggas are still gonna do it and if you retweet it then it looks weird on your part bro 2020 say something as you're well. lying yeah, like one out of every 1000 snapchats i post people end up spreading and making fun of which is like bro why are you what in the fuck is this nigga fine of course nigga think he's the kool-aid man that it's disingenuous now that's not to say that i'm posting the exact same thing as everyone else or that what i'm posting isn't it's just like certain stuff you know niggas are gonna slide up, bro. Like niggas that use Snapchat, bro. Niggas that use Snapchat. Y'all know what you can post on your story to make, you know, oh, I'm gonna make her slide up on this one. I'm gonna post a little third. Like, you know, bro. You know. You know people are gonna slide up and say stuff, man. If I had an account that I knew that nothing but Minecraft viewers are gonna see, bro. I'm not posting 
pictures of my face like this. I'm posting like silly little memes and shit. But I'm not posting fucking selfies, bro. Why? You know how I caught this nigga inside a huge ass lie, bro? He's saying I would never go out of my way to post thirst traps ever. You don't even show your face on your actual channel. So why the fuck are you doing it on a Snapchat app? Why are you doing that? You don't show it in your videos ever. This is the only time people see your face where niggas can personally interact with you. What? It's different if I did it, my niggas. I show my face every goddamn day. So I'll go on Instagram and post a little like just weird ass face or some shit, bro. You never show your face. Ever. Other people. It definitely is. I was faceless for a very long time. Never. Like what? What? What do you expect a little kid to react to seeing this shit, bro? I was faceless. Hold up. What do you want niggas to say to this? Showing your jawline and earring, bro. You're weird. Never took pictures of myself. Showing your lips. Like what the fuck? Literally my first time. Legs. Pictures, and I am just a little goofy. Again, it's fine to make fun of. Like some of these pictures are. Oh my god. Using them as evidence that I'm weird. Nigga showing legs again. You're 22. Take myself seriously. I don't think I'm super attractive. I don't think I'm super funny. I think. Nigga posted a post shower picture. Posts that are satire. A lot of my videos before. Was he on the toilet? Were satire videos, and I still post a lot of satire. A perfect example of this is my unface reveal. I posted a video on my channel where I unrevealed my face. It's a satire video. I have my two best friends burst down my door, tell me that I'm ugly and to put my mask back on, which I agree with, make a professional mask, and then go through the McDonald's drive through with it on, while saying that I'm never taking it off ever again. The number of people that- Yeah, that'd be true if you didn't continue doing that. We saw this nigga in every media after that with that mask still on, bro. Like, how long is a joke before you telling the truth, bro? How long is something a joke before you telling the truth after a while? You kept that mask on, you never took it back off after that. Seriously, was in the tens of millions. People see the headline, assume that sounds like something that cringe guy would do, and then it's history. And the same thing happens with my TikToks. Like, almost my entire TikTok page is sarcastic. But every now and then, someone will take a TikTok of mine completely seriously. Like, I posted a video of me with a chat filter on and said no filter, right after the face reveal. I made a TikTok where I take off the mask and use an ugly filter. Another TikTok where I make fun of the face leak photo, or many other sarcastic posts. But then I post a TikTok where I'm in a Walmart wearing my mask and people take it so seriously. I get tons of hate and it said how cringe it is that I would go shopping in Jesus my mask. Fucking that Christ, man. That I'm trying to hide my face after I already revealed it. Or I post a TikTok where I sing one of my songs, say no auto tune, and then kiss the ca this monstrosity that's frequently shared. Like this photo. Now it will self. Just people to say opinion. I still talk about kittens. Now, this was a stupid tweet. If Holy I shit. I thought I was good at yapping. What the fuck, man? Instead of that I'm self-aware and playing into the cringe, I didn't watch that and go, ah, you are so cool. You are such an amazing singer and you're also hot. What is this nigga not. doing? Yes, I do post cringy stuff sometimes. And I'm not trying to say that I've never been cringy or that you can't make fun of content that isn't- Was that a condom? But I've never posted anything that you could remotely say is a thirst trap or inappropriate for my audience. Wait, 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 wait. I've never been cringy or that you can't make- This nigga posted dream condoms. I've actually never done anything sexual in my private. Like, nigga, what are you talking about right now, bro? Fun of content that is intentionally cringy, but I've never posted anything that you could remotely say is a thirst trap or an approach. Well, I've seen life. like two. That is a thirst trap right there. But I've never posted anything that you could remotely say is a thirst trap or inappropriate. Duh. What do you consider pictures like this in the middle if it's not a thirst trap? Are you serious? What? For my audience, because as you can see in the context of all these other photos I've posted, it's not honest to single out one weird Snapchat out of context of the thousands I spam and then say that I post creepy photos. But yeah, like one photo I posted was heavily spread as a thirst trap by parody accounts, and it's this. I'm supposed to be dead. It's definitely not a thirst trap. Let's Nobody that said that one was a thirst video. trap, bro. Just Nobody said that one was. Story. Oh no, George not found is giving him the Slopperson. Oh no. <laughs> He's so fucking stupid, bro. Oh my god. I don't even know what to call this tactic. It's like niggas niggas taking argument 
and then find the most, like, dumbest response ever and then make it, like, a meme or some shit, bro. Like, make it seem like, oh, this is what all niggas are make to argue about, bro. Like, no, nobody was saying this one was the fucking thirst trap, bro. Nobody said that. Like, yeah, it's goofy. It was not a thirst trap. I posted one or two photos with my shirt off ever. And this one's because I thought it was cool to see my hair comb back since it's always forward. And you... Yeah, I posted my picture with my shirt off because I wanted to show my hair off. Like, what are you talking about? That's like the girls that be taking pictures like this. How do my nails look? Like, nigga, you're showing your ass! Just go like this! We can see it! What? You can't even see me or my body. There's also this monstrosity that's frequently shared. Like, this is a gross photo. I look terrible. This is not a thirst trap. This is a terrible photo. This is just disgusting. I was just spamming photos, didn't think much of it, and posted it. And now it will haunt me until the end of time. I'm crazy. Oh my god, man. Like, this nigga... <laughs> I, I, I wanted to go inside this shit empty-minded bro does anybody else like despise this nigga now like genuinely what the fuck like i've never hated anybody but i think i really hate this nigga clay i'm not even calling him dream anymore bro. i'm calling you clay my nigga clay <laughs> you're a weirdo bro what's your full name clayton Cringy and being serious when I make satire posts. I'm full of myself when I post a normal photo. I'm gross when I post a Is that a tampon? I'm weird when I post a silly photo. It's just people assuming the worst or just not knowing who I am. Bro, just, get to the I fucking pedophile so shit, yeah, bro. That's what I have to say about the Dream is weird. Thing, Dream posts photos. weird pictures. Now, He's still just going on the same yeah. shit. Dream posts weird pictures. The first allegation. Thank you. Fuck. Really important stuff. Over the last year and a half, there's been a bunch of really serious allegations made against me. Some of them were quickly disproved, others admitted they were lying, but there's still some that I'm gonna address in this video. The first no, address them all. Was pretty quickly discarded. It was an allegation of flirting and had some inconsistencies. I'm still taking it seriously though and don't wanna overlook anything, so I'm gonna talk about it now. The first ever allegations against me that were spread pretty far were made the day after my face reveal on October 3rd, 2022. A girl named Anastasia tweeted out, he's only face revealing because he's scared that I'll do it first. And then she followed it up by tweeting, I'm too tired slash real life struggling to get involved, but the YouTuber trending right now already face revealed to me years ago when he was flirting with me when I was a minor. Obviously, because of my face reveal, it took off, pointing out inconsistencies, asking questions, and so on. I didn't have any inappropriate contact with this person. I didn't have any sexual contact with this person. I hardly even remember who this person is at all. And the only messages I could even find with this person were friendly Twitter DMs. And even in those Twitter DMs, I... Okay, but we saw what she posted. <laughs> we saw what she posted, so address that. Don't address your side of things. I that they had 18 in their bio, which they contradict. I definitely didn't face reveal to them. That's an obvious lie. Almost nobody knew what I looked like at all before my face reveal. Not even most of my best friends that had known me my entire life, let alone someone I don't even remember talking to at all. She posted a screenshot of some That's text. That's a damn lie. They're they acting. From me. She showed a screenshot of my TikTok being from your contacts to try and prove that the texts were from me, which people quickly pointed out is impossible because I have a Google voice number hooked up to my TikTok, which isn't iMessage like the text. And again, she never claimed any sexual misconduct. She never claimed anything how do his fans even know that? How do his fans know that he has a fucking a Google number attached to his TikTok? How the fuck do they know that? I never genuinely hope to KTS, but this is an exception. That's a good point. Yeah, how the fuck? Who who knows that? You don't know if that's a nigga's real fucking number or not. Niggas just saw a number was like, oh, that's a Google number sexting this was also in early 2020 and she had 18 in her bio with everything and all the inconsistencies wasn't taken that seriously but it's still worth noting because people still somehow say this is one of three victims ain't no well, fucking no. three yeah, victims you have like 30 allegation. i just want to address something that i think is pretty important i see some people say why respond to fans at all or that it doesn't matter what dream said the fact that he responded to a fan what is creepy and people saying that are missing a little bit of nuance wait wait well, well, what the what the fuck happened what happened to the rest of that story where, where the fuck did anastasia go we're already, we're already on the next section? The first allegation? What? <laughs> he didn't even, what? He didn't even address it! Well, back when I started YouTube in 2019, obviously I had a very small community. Am I bugging? Mid-2020, before the Dream SMP. It's very common that when you have a smaller community, you're trying to grow your community. And part of how you do that is- Wait, 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 wait. Am I bugging right now, bro? He, he brought it up, bro. Wait, what the fuck? He just skimming through things, bro. And he was what, bro? No way. 
No, bro, nah, bro. <laughs> no way. And responding and being active. I've always been pretty active. Maybe he goes back when to it. When I was it. really small, I used to respond to just about. And nigga said, "Moving on, moving on." <laughs> even if it was just one-word answers. Obviously, later on, and as I grew, I replied less and less. And things evolved over time with my fan base growth. Like, as an example, when I started my public Snapchat in 2019. I ran the account, but oh, here we fucking go. as I was growing, I completely passed the reins off to someone else, and pretty much never logged into it ever again. Hi, I would like to remain anonymous, so I'm just going to be calling myself Rebecca. Uh it's just the fact that when everybody that you, everybody that works for you sounds like an underage girl. Like, I ain't, I ain't heard not one grown-ass man like, yo, my name's Jamal, I've been running this Snapchat account for the past, like, nigga, why they all sound 13 years old, man? It sounds like he went to one of his fans like, yo, you mind just recording this right quick? <laughs> like, what? Uh, I used to run Dream Snapchat starting in 2020. I did yo, that my for name probably Marcus. around a year. And I would, like, read through all the messages. And I'd screenshot art or funny comments. And I would respond when it was appropriate. Uh, there is definitely nothing weird going on on this account. Dream hardly even logged into it. And it was mainly me. He never used it inappropriately, and although I no longer work for Dream, I am not aware of him ever acting inappropriate with fans or anyone under. Why him. would you be aware, man? Let me just let me just rebut this argument with the same argument they try to rebut us with. Whenever we say something about this nigga, the first thing his fan base says is, "Well, there's no strong proof that that's actually true. Anybody could have just done that. Anybody could have just said that. We don't know if that's actually true or not." Then I'm saying the same thing, bro. You could have got some girl on here to say the exact same shit. We don't know if she's telling the truth or not. You are fighting for your career right now. You are capable of doing anything, nigga. You could have paid somebody 30 bucks. Yo, can you record this for me? <laughs> I'll give you a premium subscription to my membership. And she said, okay, nigga. It's the exact same argument. Not saying that it's fake, but I'm saying if you're using that shit on us, bro, I'm going to use the same thing on you. We don't know if she's telling the truth. Most, if not all, of the Snapchats I've posted since then have been through the manager. I've been playing Ace Attorney, attorney nigga. <laughs> Objection! Immediately! Like a story, without even ever logging in or seeing any messages. I think that when people talk about messaging or becoming friends with a fan, most people are thinking of a stan or a super obsessive fan. Because what makes you a fan? Having watched one video, two videos, ten, being subscribed? There's levels to it. My point being that when you're talking about messaging someone and it being weird, there has to be a weird dynamic. Obviously, a streamer that's subscribed to me and has watched my videos in the past and DMs me should not be looked at the same as a random person that does the exact same thing. I've had fans of mine turn into friends of mine, but I don't go seeking out friendships with people who have obsessions with me. There's a difference between a fan of mine who reacts to my videos because they're entertaining and makes some content about me because that's what gets views that I end up becoming friends with, than a random... I'm so happy I didn't stop doing that fucking list yesterday. I am so happy I didn't stop doing St. Nicholas for this. Now that, that might be top one career moves in my entire life. Is not stopping that stream yesterday to do this bullshit. Holy fuck, I'm so happy right now. Whatever gave me the foresight to not stop doing the fucking list and, and move on to this? Stan that post thirst edits of me. Obviously a massive difference. There's a difference between a random stand in your Twitch chat that watches every end up becoming couple to avoid being friends with them so you can become friends. Again, the whole not stands. Niggas talking about friendships, man! Very important thing. Now, this is a fairy tale! Not to, nigga! The allegation came out soon after the first and said that the first allegation was why they were sharing their story. It was from a girl that claimed that when she was 17, we inappropriately messaged. This Thank did you! Not happen. Let's get into the details. On September 23rd, 2020, Amanda messaged me from her personal Instagram account, sending a message that was clearly a fan message. She thanked me for saving her life, and I replied to this message. In September 2020, I was a lot smaller than I am now, so I got a lot less DMs, and I was much more active in like the fan communities and replying to people. And all, all I replied was, Oh, thank you for the kind words. And then I also replied, Glad to make you smile after she followed up with a message. I put a transcript of every Instagram message that I've ever sent her linked in the description. It might not be every message that she sent me because there's proof that she deleted Instagram messages. Niggas sound like T-Bunks now. <laughs> Shout out T-Bunks. T-Bunks. I don't know his name. I don't know his transcript tried to include those and piece it together. Um, but again, it, it might not be all of them because I don't know what she deleted. I only know what she deleted from the thing she accidentally showed in her old TikTok of the deleted messages. Amanda, on the other hand, how are you doing, Dream? September 25th. The next day I replied, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Amanda, the same day replied, I'm doing okay. Could be better. Could be worse. Thank you for asking. Amanda replied, How's your kitty doing? I love cats. I replied and said she's doing amazing. September 28th. So three days later, Amanda said, Dream, I need some advice. I'm trying to become a small streamer on Twitch, but not a single person joins my streams. How do I get an audience? October 2nd. So a few days later, I replied. 
and said, try and play with your friends, maybe. Post clips to Reddit and stuff. And then she replied and said, okay, thank you with a heart. The next day she messaged me again and said, Dream, would you ever consider playing Among Us with me? XD. I guess this was, this was during the Among Us phase. We're still in 2020. October 5th, 2020. I replied, maybe. Heart. Amanda said, LOL, I'll take the maybe. That would be sick. I didn't reply. So this is a month and a little bit later. Amanda said, hi, Dream. And then she sent another message that was deleted after she made the allegations. But we don't know what it was. We only know the last couple characters. And again, we only know it exists because she messed up and included it in an old TikTok of hers. And then I replied and, you know, later and said, hi. Amanda said, how are you? November 16th. So that's another two days later. I replied and said, good, good. How about you? She replied and said, I'm pretty good. Thank you. November 30th. So, you know, the two weeks later, Amanda said, hi, Dream. I want to actually become a streamer like you and your friends. I'm just so uneducated on what supplies I need. Can you recommend me all the products I need to successfully stream? Like computer? I'm just listening right now. Let me lock in. Let me lock in. Because I think I take this like DM stuff actually serious, bro. Because of course, as you niggas know, I DM most niggas back in here, bro. Like with anything. So I got to see exactly what the fuck he's saying, what he's doing and what he's responding back. So most of the stuff that I've seen so far is pretty normal. Something that I would have said. Let's just see what the fuck he says to maybe take it up to that next notch. Uh, the heart was a little weird whenever he said, thank you. How about you with the heart at the end of it? I probably wouldn't send that back to a woman, especially like an underage girl. Because that could just be taken weird. Hey, Paz, appreciate that. Ray, my nigga. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. But yeah, the heart was the only thing that was kind of like, uh, I wouldn't have done that. But I guess it's not that weird, I suppose. But yeah, let me lock in and watch this shit. Pass, thank you. I hope you had an amazing stream, my nigga. Thank you, brother. Cam, mic, headset, etc. You have no idea how I appreciate it. December 5th, 2020. So, like a week later, I replied and said, almost everything I have was recommended by Bad Way Halo. Uh -huh. Amanda replied and she sent another message that she deleted after she made the allegations. That again, we won't know what it was. December 26th. So, almost a month later, Amanda sent a video. We don't know what the video was. I don't think it was opened. I, I don't know, though. I didn't reply. What? January 5th. Amanda no. Again. Hi, Dream. I just want to no, say, no, you. no, no, no. You didn't just not open the video. I mean, if you've been pretty constant and responding back to everything that this girl is saying, you didn't just not open. I forgot what was inside. Like, no, ain't no forgetting what the fuck was inside of it, nigga. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished this year. I hope I am fortunate enough one day to be as successful as you. If you tell me what kind of computer you have, it'd be great. January 16th, so 11 days later, I replied, thank you. Amanda replied, deleted message, and then part of it was, how are you? But obviously, I didn't reply. April 13th, so a while, like a long time later, Amanda messaged me again and said, hi. I replied, hi. Amanda said, how are you? I said, decent. How are you? She said, I'm all right. Thank you. And she said, I heard some snippets of the song you're working on, and I really like it. You have a really nice singing voice. I replied on April 14th, thank you. So that was uh, the next day. Um, she said, you're welcome. And then December 26th, so that was like a long time later, she messaged me and said, Merry late Christmas. Sorry, I didn't reply. Um, January 10th, she messaged me and said, hi, my Snapchat was banned, and I have no friends. How are you? I replied two days later and said, how TF does a Snapchat get banned? Amanda replied and said i'm pretty sure it's because i posted videos of me smoking but all my memories from 2014 are gone so sad i replied the next day and said damn and then she replied that same day and said yeah it sucks how are your holidays i replied the next day and said good good how about you and then uh, amanda replied that same day and said pretty good you may be wondering at this point why are you replying to her you seem clearly disinterested you're taking days or weeks to reply and when you do reply that, you're dry. well only a nigga that's really like hard out on trying to get this nigga canceled would ask a question like that uh you are allowed to respond back to people, my nigga. Just be a normal person when you do that shit. Don't be a fucking creepo weirdo. Like, only niggas that are really trying to cancel this nigga would say, why are you responding back to it, bro? I mean, like, this is going to sound crazy. This is going to sound absolutely fucking crazy, but I'll clean it up after I say it. Nigga, I work at a job where I talk to underage people all the fucking time, my nigga. If you have no weird intentions, it's literally just a fucking conversation. It's only niggas that go into shit with weird ass intentions that make shit weird as fuck, nigga. It's my job to talk to people. Clip, 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 clip. Nigga, I work in a high school! Instagram has a really stupid feature that makes it so that once you've replied to someone's DMs once, you can't remove their ability to personally message you. Unless you block them. You cannot whoa, be following whoa, them. You can whoa, delete them from your inbox. They can still message you and pop up in your notifications. I'm showing an example on screen of my DM continuing to pop up on my alt account just to show how it works. Obviously, given I replied to Amanda back in 2020 when I had a much smaller community, she was stuck in my inbox for the rest of time. You can temporarily delete someone from your inbox and it deletes all of your message history to them for you, but they can still message you with now a blank DM history. So at one point, wanting her to stop DMing me, I swiped her out of my inbox multiple times. It's actually completely provable that I did do this. I'm showing a video of my Instagram DMs to Amanda now, where they start in December of 2021, much later than her original DMs. Because you can't delete other people's individual messages and you can only delete entire conversations this proves 100 that i was trying to delete her ability to message me in 2021 it also shows a problem the only messages that i can see from amanda were from december 2021 onward i had no context or recollection of her original messages to me that made it clear that she was a really big fan i don't remember everyone that messages me who they are where i know them from so on she messaged me from her personal instagram had no connections to any fan accounts didn't send me any more fan messages and she had dm'd me many times talking wait about why did he some of which she deleted she i'm said... lost why did he delete why did he delete the messages I'm I'm completely lost. What, what did I miss something? Why did he delete the messages? Go back. He said he wanted to cut all contact with her, but for what reason? He wanted to he wanted a fan to stop DMing him? For what? She was she seemed like she was having a pretty cordial conversation. Why would you why would I have any reason to go to any of our DMs? And delete everything if there wasn't something I was kind of, you know, skeptical about something getting out. Like, what what would be the reason for that? 
If this is your fan base, like, what's weird about talking to niggas? No matter what age they are, if you're not saying creepy, weird shit. That's just kind of, that was the first thing that's kind of, like, weird. Why would you delete? Like, especially if niggas are accusing you of shit. Wouldn't you want to have that, like, oh, the ability to go screenshot something and be like, yeah, I didn't do anything. You can see the entire chat log right here, nigga. You can read it for yourself. But now it just looks weird because you deleted everything. So even if you say you weren't doing anything weird, nigga, we don't know because you deleted every single bit of evidence that could have been used against you. Exactly. Hold it on some real shit. Ace Attorney niggas, two more days. After I beat this DLC, we back to it. Seemed very normal, friendly, and implied strongly that she was overage. What I thought about her age doesn't matter that much because nothing inappropriate happened, but it does matter to show my mind. Hey, okay, so you're saying the same thing I'm saying. If nothing inappropriate is on your mind or happening, then why the fuck does it matter that you're talking to her? So why delete it? Hold it! What? Around befriending underage girls or people that are obsessed with me or my content. To the best of my knowledge, she was neither. Continuing with the transcript, now we get to the very end, which was our first real conversation. This one was about music, which makes sense. It's something I'm really passionate about. At the time, I was working on a song called Trust. You thought I was just talking that fast, man. I was talking about music. I gave her my Snapchat. I said, "Add me on Snapchat," and she said, "Sure thing." Just added you. I was sharing music snippets with a bunch of music projects, and in the middle of us talking about music, uh, in the middle of us talking about music, I gave her my Snapchat. See, why? I've never given any of you niggas my Snapchat ever. What reason would y'all need for us to get off of social media, off my public account? I've never talked to any of you niggas off of private account, off my phone number. He said accidentally gave her my Snapchat? What? Hold on, let me hear what he has to say. Music, I gave her my Snapchat. I said, add me on Snapchat, and she said, sure thing, just added you. Okay. Why? For what? And in the middle of us talking about music, I gave her my Snapchat. I said, add me on Snapchat, and she said, sure thing, just added you. I was sharing music snippets with a bunch of people. Yeah, let's go to a place where messages don't save. About the time, and as we were talking about music, I wanted to share them with her. And I'm obviously not going to send snippets of a new song over Instagram. Now, I pretty much always use Snapchat as one of my... Uh, for what reason? What? <laughs> Wait. His reason for going to Snapchat is because I didn't want to send them over Instagram? Dog. main forms of communication it was actually the first social media I ever got because a friend of mine wanted to start a streak with me. And it's something I started using a lot more when I became faceless on YouTube. Because yeah, stuff is deleted. You don't have to stress over people analyzing or leaking everything you say. And for me, even for something as simple as a picture of my cat, people used to zoom into my cat's eyes to look at the reflection to try and dox me. This was not uncommon at all. Can't so you send pictures over Instagram that disappear? Or is that a new feature? I'll give this nigga the benefit of the doubt, sure. You wanted to send her videos on Snapchat that you knew would disappear so people won't overanalyze them. But she can still screenshot it and overanalyze it. What is going on Snapchat change anything? If it's a fan that wants to analyze your life, she could just screenshot the picture or screen record the video. What? He don't want to leak his music. Then, nigga, I'm going to record it on Snapchat. What are you talking about? I'm just going to record whatever you send me on Snapchat. I could record it on Instagram. What are you speaking about, Fluber? I could easily record it and get it by any means if I wanted to. I felt much more comfortable using Snapchat during this period. Especially with people that I wasn't great friends with, but even with my best friends. Now, let's go. The thing is, like, some of you niggas may be a little young to understand, bro. Maybe it's a little bit. Yeah, but she was a fan. She wouldn't want to ruin her friendship. What are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about, bro? She wanted to analyze it. She would have done it regardless of what app it was. No. I'm not giving anybody my Snapchat an underage girl. showed that her birthday when she would turn 18 is on February 17th, exactly a month later. She claims that we sexted from around the 17th of January, the day I added her on Snapchat, to the 10th of February, and then that it stopped. She said that while she was still underage, we exchanged nudes. Her evidence of this was two photos of, supposedly me, from after she was 18, complimenting her. Her final important claim was that she traveled to Orlando in August and that we planned to meet up and have sex. And I just want to make sure that I blatantly deny this before continuing. None of this is true. And now I'm going into more detail. Now, unfortunately, because she didn't provide any proof of these things, it's difficult to be specific about some of the things she claimed. It's much easier to completely make up that something happened than it is to prove that it never did. Like if I said right now, prove to me 100% that you never sexed a specific person that you've had on Snapchat at any point, it would be impossible to do. But what I can do is lay out all the inconsistencies, talk about the proven lies, the specifics, point out questions that were never asked, and provide all the evidence that I have. And I believe that luckily, that's way more than enough. So first, I want to talk about the timeline. Every contact we've ever had with each other before January 17th is the Instagram DMs, which I just read to you, which are now all public in their entirety in the description of this video, other than the messages that she deleted. She claims that sexing started around January 17th and that sexing stopped February 10th. So from the 17th, 
Another inconsistency. I'll pull that. I'll pull that. Um, let's see. So, your number one reason for not wanting to talk to her on Instagram. Can the jury please tell me what he said, what the reason was? He said he deleted all the messages because what? Because he didn't want to stay in contact with her. Because he didn't want her contacting him anymore. So he tried to delete the message so she'd get the message and leave him alone. Is that not word for word what he said? He said, I deleted our messages so she would not contact me anymore. So why would you then give her another app to contact you on? Now an app that I don't have to delete messages because they delete after you send. If you don't want to talk to her anymore, then why the fuck would you give her another app to contact you on that's even more personal than your public Instagram account? Like, what are you speaking about right now, bro? You, you want to respond to that, Fluber? To maybe February 10th is the time frame where we were sexting. So even if we say that it started a couple weeks before it stopped, you'd have to believe that every message you've just seen, we went from that to sexting days later in 2022 before my face reveal. Even if you want to give her the maximum benefit of doubt and say that she confused the timeline, she turned 18 on the 17th, one week after she claimed the sexting stopped. So there's not much leeway. Secondly, we can talk about her Twitter. She tweeted out defending me from hate on my face reveal 10 days before the allegations and was liking my tweets, including a subscriber milestone tweet two days before she tweeted her allegations. With the timing of the face reveal and her okay. allegation, my belief is that there was a lot of hate and that it's easy to get spiteful and join in on a hate train. I ignored multiple of her Instagram DMs and Snapchat messages in recent months. And I had so also what? a new Snapchat that I didn't add her on. I still use my old occasionally but she's liking your stuff so the fuck what <laughs> so what responded that's my only real explanation for why she flipped so quickly from being publicly positive to me to lying about me but i guess i'll never really know thirdly the only photo she showed as proof that i groomed her were both pictures from based on her own evidence after she was 18 meaning even if we give her the benefit of doubt and assume everything she's provided is real and truthful she was 18 when these messages would have been sent and i had no context to the fact that she was more than a small streamer but on top of that i unblocked her snapchat went through our snapchat chats and couldn't find either of the messages that she was talking about i also downloaded all of our snapchat logs using the snapchat data tool which she can do as well and neither of the compliments that she showed were in the logs now honestly this is pretty useless information because there's almost no messages in the logs at all but it's still extremely weird that she was asked for these logs nigga said i got the entire logs and all we see is media type, text, created text. Thank you. Media type, media type, media type. Nigga, there's nothing on here. We're in the logs. Now, honestly, this is pretty. Mad snap sent 2022. Snap, 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 snap. We can't see none of this shit, bro. Information because there's almost no messages in the logs at all. But it's still extremely weird that she was asked for these logs. Nigga, this ain't C plus plus. I'm not a coder. She never did it. Probably because it doesn't support what she was saying. On top of those things, from everything she had told me, she was 19 and we had no inappropriate contact. The context of these messages would be a 22 year old creator calling a 19 year old streamer gorgeous on a birthday post while giving her a gift card as a birthday present. Finally, she said that we planned to meet up and have sex in August when she was in Orlando. It was suggested that we meet up and have sex. I was either going to have him come to my the resort sure. I was at, or he was going to pick me up and bring him to his house. First of all, this was before my face reveal. I did not leave my house. I was massively paranoid. I was not meeting up with a random person I had just met two months before my face reveal, let alone at a resort, which is what her claim was. I'm gonna go ahead and play a phone call with my mom just to give you some perspective from before my face reveal. How many times do you think that I left? the house between 2021 and my face reveal. Well, I don't know, three? Maybe four. This nigga, there's just no way. If I were to call my mom inside the room right now, and say, yo, mom, how many times have I left the house between when I moved in to now? One, she's not going to possibly know. Because if I want to leave the house whenever I want, she's not always going to be aware of when I leave the house. And two, <laughs> nigga, it's my mom. I'm going to tell her, yo, say three. <laughs> she's going to say three. But what are you talking about, bro? That is his mom, but why the fuck would she want the nigga to be in trouble? And if she's not lying, then how would she know the amount of times he actually left the fucking house? What did I leave the house for whenever I left the house? Um, well, I know you went to the dentist three times. This nigga said, he said he left the house three times and all three times were to go to the fucking dentist? Nigga, what are you, <laughs> how fucked up are your teeth? I ain't been in the dentist three times in the past two years. That might make me seem mad, you know, drastically unhealthy, but <laughs> what? You went three times in three months, nigga, to the dentist? Nasty ass teeth three times. Does he have does he have braces or something? He probably had a cavity. Sure, I guess. Three. Your teeth might be fucked up. Alright, yeah. All right. So I can I guess I can't use that argument. And then I think one other time was when you had the um, kidney stones. 
Oh yeah, you're the hospital. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're the only times you left the house, and we were worried because we didn't want you to call nine one one because we didn't even know if they would come because of all the fake um, swattings and everything. So I had to come get you and take you to the hospital. True. So it was probably just five not times. fucking true, man. Okay, what was the process when we did leave the house? What was the process? And we almost didn't call 911 because we thought they were going to show up. Look at 911 doesn't work like the boy that cried wolf, nigga. They're going to show up no matter who calls how many times. 911 ain't going to be like, oh, it's that house again. I'm not going this time. Like, nigga, what, in what country does it work like that? Process like. Crazy. I pulled into the garage, shut the garage door. You would get in the back seat, way back of the van with a blanket over yourself, and you wouldn't come out from a. Now, I told you, niggas. Couple weeks ago, that I, before I was doing this streaming stuff, was going to school to be a criminal justice detective. I I I use certain like terminology and stuff in some of my videos. Maybe you guys see this shit whenever I'm playing like dirt, certain detective games and stuff like that. But when niggas remember perfectly random situations that they have no business remembering, that's usually because either either one pre rehearsed or two it's a lie. So if I ask Magic Johnson the third, yo, what happened? What happened two Tuesdays ago at 9 p.m.? That nigga's like, oh, actually, I walked inside my room and turned on the TV and then got my blanket and covered myself up and then ordered pizza around uh, 9 30. And then, like, nigga, why do you remember that? What? Like, if you remember a situation just too perfect, nigga, you were supposed to remember that situation too perfectly. What's up, my nigga, Buddy Yoshi? Bro, I haven't seen you in a while, bro. How you doing? I hope you're doing amazing, my nigga. the garage door, we get in the back. When we did leave the house, what was the process like? Crazy. I pulled into the garage, shut the garage door, we get in the back seat, way back of the van, with a blanket over yourself, and you wouldn't come out from under the blanket until we were on the highway. I was a little paranoid. <laughs> a little bit. What was the inside of the house like? What precautions did we take? Oh my gosh, it was like a cave. Um, every window was covered, even the high windows that were arches. We had to like tape curtains over them so that even a drone wouldn't be able to see in everything was covered yeah so we had the the bank now just remember this is still addressing the fact that he didn't go fuck an underage girl in orlando he's still talking about that situation come to the house because you wouldn't go out of the house but we needed to set up bank accounts whatever it was that needed to happen we were the ones that did it so that you didn't have to go out okay thank you mom you're welcome. I love you. Love you too. Bye. Again, as you can probably tell, what she claims definitely didn't happen. Ethos. Love. Emotion. Make people feel some type of heartstrings. Oh, he loves his mom. Ethos. <laughs> Nigga be kind of smart at the end of the day. Either she's telling the truth and her story makes sense or she's not and it doesn't. Now, some other stuff to note. After her allegations, she deleted a lot of evidence. She unliked a lot of tweets she had liked. She deleted replies of hers on Twitter and TikTok that hurt her credibility or contradicted what she was saying. She deleted Instagram DMs to me and only got caught because she accidentally showed them in an old TikTok of hers and that's all completely factual and documented. Later, she was bragging on TikTok calling people doubting her jealous, saying I'm gorgeous and my favorite YouTuber thought so too. It's giving jealous. Not treating the serious situation that she claimed happened seriously at all. People also Don't matter. Her. Has nothing to do with the case. Of hers where she was replying very inappropriately to other streamers how she responded to people and what she was saying on social media other than that one specific matter has nothing to do with what the fuck you're saying right now she was even banned in one of my friend's chats for saying she wanted to sit on his face these accounts weren't linked to her instagram so i would have had no idea doesn't matter the fans of mine questioning her with slurs she doesn't matter why and tell me that she was 18 but that she changed. why bring up slurs now you're trying to paint a picture that she's a bad person bro what what did that have to do with anything her mind i guess so i was going to lie and tell him i was 18 she said she would provide proof of the fact that she told me she was now that is crazy if that is true then that is the most he should have fucking started off by using that Instagram, so I would have had no idea about them. She also replied to fans of mine questioning her with slurs. She also said that she was gonna lie and tell me that she was 18, but that she changed her mind, I guess. So I was going to lie and tell him I was 18. She said she would provide proof of the fact that she told me she was 17 and that I still sexed her tomorrow. I didn't, and that proof will come out tomorrow. And guess what? She never posted proof because this never happened. She oh, she said I was going to lie and say I was 18. Tweeted out thanking people for all the support and claimed at the end that I deleted our DMs right as she tweeted this and specifically said my end too, which means her DMs too. Well, I just want to point out that this is impossible. There's not a single mainstream social media platform that lets you delete both people's messages. And we only had each other on Instagram and Snapchat where you can't do that on either. Hold it! Didn't you just say 10 minutes ago that you deleted both sides of y'all's Instagram DMs? And if you don't know what the fuck she said because you deleted them. But, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, um. There. She claimed that she was laughing and was going to prove people wrong with pictures of my penis. To which, again, 
Never happened. Lastly, she tweeted saying that she's getting the law involved and going to the police. Said she's gonna put me in jail unless I confess. That hold it was clean as fuck. She said she would upload her Snapchat logs. She didn't. She said she would sue me. She didn't. And now I'm making this video. She provided absolutely no proof for any of her claims and said that she didn't have any because she wanted her favorite YouTuber to trust her, which could be a completely valid argument. Except the pictures that she posted were from a second phone, meaning there was no risk of me knowing. She was taking pictures of compliments from a second phone, but has no evidence of anything sexual. Has no evidence of us planning to meet up and have sex. Apparently, from after these pictures were secretly taken. Has no evidence of a singular inappropriate message from me or her, or even anything at all that isn't a story reply from Snapchat's story page of all your friends. What's more likely? She happens to have no evidence of anything she's claiming, even from things she claimed happened after she was taking pictures secretly using a second phone. Or she doesn't have any evidence because it didn't happen. She factually deleted and hid messages. She factually lied about me deleting messages that I didn't. She called people doubting her jealous of her. Was banned from streamers' chats before this for posting sexual things. And she lied about having specific pieces of evidence that she never provided because they don't exist. If she's willing to factually lie, cover up, and hide things, how can you trust anything else she says as being representative of the truth? Lastly, once again, she said she was going to take legal action. She then tweeted a pic. This seems like a case where, unfortunately, we're never going to know whether or not she was telling the truth. Because as he started this whole argument off, basically saying um, he deleted a lot of stuff from his side of things. She deleted a lot of stuff from her side of things. Like they both deleted so much shit that there's a huge gray area that both of their arguments is, yo, it happened. Yo, it didn't happen. And we're never going to know what the fuck happens, unfortunately, because they both deleted so much evidence from his side and her side that we're never going to fucking know. She went missing off the internet? Oh my god. As a disabled person, it's not even a real slur. We used to say that shit to each other all the time. Motherfucking fifth grade. Dream must have been homeschooled if you actually think that's even worth bringing up. I just wouldn't bring up, if I was trying to like, prove that I wasn't a pedophile... I'm not going to be like, yeah, I didn't do that because I uh, remember back in 2021, Dystopian called me the R slur. I, I, I didn't do anything to him. Remember he said that? It's like, that's not going to be my first fucking argument, bro. Picture of the inside of a police station and also said she'll come back with more evidence to be patient, that it's a process and that it could be days. And that's her last tweet. It's been almost a year and a half now. Obviously, nothing happened. I waited and waited. Then I got impatient. So I asked my legal team to look more into it. They got all of her information. And after filing many requests, they couldn't find anything. So annoyed and still impatient, I asked them to get more specific. And after a lot of digging, my legal team was able to track down exactly where this picture is from based on the colors of the walls, the cameras, and a plaque outside the door. Then had someone go to the police station and requested specific records from this specific police station and checked every record they could, criminal and civil. I didn't find anything. I didn't find anything. All jokes aside, niggas that can see a picture and know where the fuck exactly that shit is that scares me <laughs> that's the main reason i'll be posting my location and shit when i'm inside my own state y'all will only see vacation pictures of me because that that genuinely scares me niggas that can triangulate a location be like well um this building is only right here and this plaque would only be sold in 2021 in the state of wyoming so it has to be in this like niggas that can do shit like that absolutely fucking not that is scary as shit that is scary as shit I have one encounter that one single time, bro. Apollo the Yapper. I posted a picture I was inside uh, the California Universal Studios, right? I posted a picture of me, Jez, Mikey, and Lakito. I didn't check my DMs until after I left. The nigga was like, yo, I showed up, bro. Where you at, bro? Like, what the? <laughs> you showed up? I'm glad we left that shit, bro. Oh, hell nah. I don't know what the fuck that nigga's about to do. But we, I guess we accidentally avoided that nigga for like the time being until we all left. Bro invited himself. <laughs> like nigga wasn't even a meetup, bro. It wasn't like a New York trip. I was, the California trip was like us doing our own thing, bro. The New York trip was a meetup. The, the California niggas, they found me. And there was no information at all. I was not even in their system. You're not listed in my system at all. So if you want to believe everything she said, you have to believe either one of these two things. Either one, she lied, this photo is fake, she never filed anything, and if she's lying about that, why would she not be lying about literally everything else? Or two, the picture is real, and whatever story she told didn't even meet the minimum required standard of proof to file a single piece of paperwork that my legal team could find in over a year and a half. I also sent a photocopy of my driver's life. I'll believe the second one more than I do the first one, only because, like I said, criminal justice and shit. Um, even some, unfortunately, even some grape cases can't be filed completely because there's not enough evidence. Like they need like rock solid proof that this happened at this time with this, with this, with this, with this, with this, with this. They need a shitload of evidence for even some great cases. So when you have cases like this, that everything took place online where stuff can be deleted and stuff, maybe she didn't have enough evidence, but that doesn't prove that she didn't go to the police station. That doesn't prove that it didn't happen. That just proves that she went and she didn't have enough evidence to actually make anything cook, basically, is, is what's, what it comes out to, unfortunately. Some to this specific police station, a copy of Amanda's information, and let them know I was happy to answer any questions. To which, again, nothing ever happened. Nigga sent that from his official fucking dream account, bro. 
a copy of Amanda's information and let them know I was happy to answer any questions. To which, again, nothing ever happened. Not a single question, there was not a single case, accusation, or anything substantial enough to even have me in any system. And inevitably, when after this video, she makes another thread or another post, reiterating the same lies that she has already said, or promising even more things that she never follows through on, go to the police, or sue me. The standard of proof for you suing me is only proving that it's more likely than not that you're telling the truth. 51%. Bro's going 1999, he's my age. She's not going to treat it like it's Twitter. She's going to have to address all the lies. She's going to have to address all the inconsistencies. She's going to have to address her weird comments, her false promises, her character, and most importantly, be held accountable in her real life for what she's saying. This isn't online drama. This is real life stuff. There are real victims that have been manipulated, abused, and taken advantage of. Amanda, you are hurting actual victims. You are diminishing the very real trauma that victims of grooming and abuse have gone through. You are making it harder for real victims of abuse to come forward. You are not a victim. Fuck, not man. It's just like... If she is telling the truth and he's saying all this shit knowing that she's telling the truth, this nigga is such a psychopath, bro. Like, if she's genuinely telling the truth but just did not have enough evidence to take this nigga to court and he's saying, yo, you're faking, yo, you're, you're disproving all other abuses that come forward, that is so sick doing a good thing. No matter how terrible you think I am, or that the ends justify the means, you are hurting victims. Just in case this video isn't enough for you to realize that, check your mailbox. That's all I have to say about these allegations. Now, before continuing with other stuff, I want to talk a little bit about what happened after these allegations. After these allegations and after my face reveal, I'll be honest, I've lost a lot of motivation. I distanced myself from Minecraft, and I even thought about quitting and retiring. Of course, it was pretty scary, and I just wanted to be able to upload Minecraft videos and have fun with my friends without worrying about people trying to ruin my life or attack my family or make up lies about me. And after all the swatting and doxing and fake allegations, it really just felt not worth it anymore. But also, I'd basically been stuck inside for the majority of the last four years, so I just thought I'd step back for a little bit. I traveled with my friends and. I mean, didn't he say that's what he did anyway? Didn't his mom just say he only left the house three times? What changed? What? <laughs> You're having to stay inside when you already were staying inside? I had a lot of creators for the first time. I worked on music, had my tour, and really just stepped back from my online life. And I feel like during this time, I really disappointed a lot of my friends and their fans as a result. I didn't spend as much time on the finale of the Dream SMP as I should have. I wasn't good at communicating about anything, really, including... I stayed inside the house more, and then... And everything, and I pretty much <laughs> by doing that, I went on tour. That weren't in my immediate circle. There was a looming cloud over me, and I felt bad talking to people, because I didn't want to bring any negativity towards anyone. Later on, I got pretty insecure about my creator friendships that weren't people that I was super close with before YouTube. And even though everyone that I was friends with was very supportive and had my back, but making a massive mess by tweeting publicly about a problem that I had with Quackity, because he was wrong with Stanford, and explain how I was after that, keep your advice, people were to Dora, and one of the turtles in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had a terrible experience in real life with this person, so... Oh, y'all want to see that part? Nicholas Cantu. If you don't know who that is, he's the voice actor for Gumball, Diego Fundora, and one of the turtles in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had a terrible experience in real life with this person, so I replied to him talking about it and defending myself, and this situation blew up. I don't think I've ever gotten more hate in my life. September 23rd, I went to a friend of mine's birthday party in Austin, Texas. When I showed up, Nicholas Cantu was there. Before he says anything, <laughs> Gumball got in your ass, nigga, on some real shit, bro. I didn't even know who the fuck Nicholas Cantu before this, bro, but I got so much respect for this nigga now. <laughs> awesome. You didn't even have to really address this shit, bro. We wanted niggas to address the pedophilia, not Nicholas Cantu and, and Mandark. We don't give a fuck about this shit. There, who was already drunk and was drinking. He was being very aggressive to me throughout the night. I didn't know him. This was my first time ever meeting him, and we were not friends. Eventually, while on FaceTime to show his friends, he hit me out of nowhere. Again, this was Gumball my first time ever meeting him. Nobody beating your ass. And then when leaving the party, everyone decided he to actually gonna be my ass. Late, and there wasn't any of us there. Nicholas ended up in the front seat of the Uber that I was in, despite my apprehension. Oh I my thought, fucking god, man! He did not get a fucking animator to do this. What's the worst that could happen? It's an Uber ride. There's other people there, so I wasn't worried. Little did I know. This <laughs> nigga put Darwin in in the sister. What's the sister's name? Amy. Oh my god, man, this shit is so comedy, bro. <laughs> Anias? <laughs> what? Bro, why is this inside a pedophilia dressing video, bro? He stole that? Ended up dropping his phone out of the Uber window in the middle of the highway. And after he got out to look for it, the police showed up and stopped him from looking because it was dangerous and dark. Eventually, the Uber driver convinced Nicholas to leave. Well, I want to promise you that and he was drunk. Test. Hey, look, hey, we're, we're, we're about to head out. And after we left, the Uber driver was trying to give advice to Nicholas on the police, telling him that he could have been arrested. And Nicholas did not like what he had to say. You were dead, you're down, so you're uh, how far did you go on your education? Who cares? Of course, I started to get involved and argue with Nick, defending the Uber driver, and Nick did not like that at all. Either you're going to be paralyzed or you're going to be dead. I'm serious. Okay, man. <laughs> he was saying this, of course. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy, but I did hear a lot of people coming out and saying that basically, um, he was uh, experiencing a manic breakdown because he was drunk. I did see a lot of people coming out and saying that, like, he apparently has something wrong with him and he was experiencing a manic breakdown because he's, like, underage and drunk or something like that. So, anything he said in that, I, apparently they, like, justified it by that all happening while that was going on, basically. Getting bitched by gumballs and saying, that's what the mask is! I think you're... <laughs> He went crazy after that. After he had already assaulted me. While this was all happening, damn. He was in the car with me that I also just met that night. Oh, so that was true? And he was saying this, of course, after he had already assaulted me. While this was all happening, one of the other two people in the car. <laughs> he was he really slept your ass? He was aware of this, and he was actually the one that asked to be recorded. Thanks for recording, by the way. How long is it? But yeah, this YouTube video is going to be not subscribed to the Kanji Network. Turn your sets right there.
The next day, Nicholas sent me a very nice DM saying that he was sorry for hitting me, that he was having a really rough night, and that he was high and drunk, and said that he was sorry for spreading false allegations that he knew nothing about, saying that he recognized it could ruin people's lives. He complimented me, called me humble, grounded, and a good human. I didn't accept this apology, but I, I moved on, and honestly, I felt kind of bad for him. I recognized that he was once a child actor, and I feel like there's a lot of bad stuff in that industry, so I felt a little bit of sympathy. I hoped he would just learn from the mistakes he made that night and move on. But then, of course, Nicholas started tweeting, spreading the same lies about me that he had already apologized for spreading and recognized could ruin. <laughs> he was also wishing death upon me publicly in Twitter replies, and that's when I realized it wasn't just one bad night, and people needed to know about this. After I shared my experiences with him, he denied everything. He DM'd me saying I was lying, saying that if there wasn't video proof it's all lies he tweeted denying it all which he deleted and then he tweeted lying more about the situation but also base, base. While underplaying it. he blatantly lied about the fact that he tipped the uber driver when he didn't he blatantly lied about me sending unsolicited pics to people he also deleted that tweet almost immediately after he blatantly lied about the reason he hit me and claimed i called the girl a whore and got slapped for it which again was later recanted but not after millions of people had already seen those lies nicholas tried dming one of the people that was in the uber that night with us to try and get them on his side as a witness that caused the person who i didn't know at all to message me and tell me that they had videos of him being horrible from that night and that they don't like it's just one of those things where I don't know how much longer we're going to watch this video because it's really starting to piss me off and aggravate me a little bit. But when you get accused of 20 plus things, we have to make an hour and a half video. How much you really expect us to believe that you were innocent in every single one of these cases. You're saying that you didn't do any of this stuff. You were the good guy in every single scenario we've reacted to for the past 50 minutes. You were the good guy in every single one of those things. You got accused of 20 plus things, nigga. There wasn't one where you owned up to like, yeah, I actually did that. I apologize. He hasn't even apologized yet. What has he said sorry about? He just came on here and said he was innocent about everything. And the things that he said he was innocent for, he didn't even fully address. He just said, yo. He didn't even address the, what was the first thing, the Amanda thing? Who was the first girl, the Anastasia? He was like, yo, that happened. That was crazy, right? Anyway, <laughs> internet drama. Like, what the... He's pretending to be innocent. I asked them if they'd be willing to send me the videos so I could back up my story since he was denying it and lying. And they told me that he was threatening them to make sure they didn't give me the videos. After I ended up finally getting the videos, I posted them. I needed to defend myself against the lies that he was telling and wanted to share his proof. I also posted screenshots of text between me and the Uber driver confirming that he had blatant lies. <laughs> Stop lie. saying that. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. You can feel however you want to feel, but please go type that somewhere else, my nigga. I am not. Hey, Twitch, I'm not allowing these niggas to say shit like that, bro. Hell nah. Hell nah. Hell nah. Whenever, if this dream nigga does actually ever do anything inside this shit, I don't want them to use my stream as the end. Look at this stream that I was advocating for it. Like, no, I was not. No, no. I, I didn't advocate for anything. Absolutely fucking not. Hell nah. The Uber driver. After I posted this, Nicholas went silent, deleted his tweets, and hasn't said anything publicly since. People still think that I lied and faked the Uber driver's text. Them niggas the capitalizing it. I want him to die now. Like, oh my God. Uh, they, are, they, aren't using, they aren't using me. They are not using me. Absolutely fucking not. Falsely spread by Nicholas or other people online. So I got in contact with the Uber driver from that night. I interviewed him, and I'll let him speak for himself to help clear some things up. Hey, what's the worst that can happen? It's an Uber what the oh, fuck? Yeah, yeah, what's, what's the worst that can happen? happen? Why is he playing that? That nigga put the Halo theme? What the? Why did he start playing the Halo theme when it showed the black nigga? What the fuck? What? The Uber driver confirming that he had blatantly lied and didn't even tip the Uber driver. After I posted this, Nicholas went silent, deleted his tweets, and hasn't said anything publicly since. People still think that I lied and faked the Uber driver's text, or many other lies that were falsely spread by Nicholas or other people online. So I got in contact with the Uber driver from that night, I interviewed him, and I let him speak for himself to help clear some things up. Hey, what's the worst that can happen? It's an Uber driver. Oh, what? <laughs> nigga, is that Agent Zero Zero? What is going on? What's going on, man? This is our Uber driver, who happens to be- Yo, he's got some black nigga. <laughs> Terrell? Oh my, this is the first- This is the first voice he played that was a grown man this entire fucking video, bro. I'm surprised he didn't get another 10-year-old girl. Hey, um, I know, man, stop. Highest rated Uber drivers in all of Texas. He agreed to come share his recollection of what happened, so I'm just gonna let him talk. When I picked you guys up, you know, he had a lot of energy. It was wild, like, putting his head outside filming. I don't care. Uh, mayhem, doxing is serious, moaning. Of all the Nicholas drama, someone tweeted out this, accusing me of sexting a 16 slash 17 year old girl named Jamie. Because I was currently the internet punching bag and it was proof that the punching was justifiable, it was spread very quickly. Without a lot of questions being asked, before I break it down, I want to immediately say that this is not true. I did not groom anyone. I did not groom Jamie and I would never be inappropriate with someone underage. When they posted this allegation, attached was a video that of course went viral. It was a video from another phone of a Snapchat being opened, supposedly from Dream, that had moaning in the background and a very sexual caption. This is the clip in its entirety without audio. What's the clip? 
They also attached screenshots of Discord DMs between anonymous people who were claimed to be two friends of dreams and said it was them discussing me having sex at my You did? Cap? Cause I was confronted about it and that I admitted it. Play the, the audio. They posted. <laughs> I was going to throw my fucking headset at this goddamn PC if he did that shit. About changes and I've mentioned everything that they claimed. Now, just to reiterate, this is not true. Every piece of evidence is either out of context, edited, blatantly lied about, or presented in a very disingenuous way. Again, I did not groom anyone. I also was never confronted about grooming by any of my friends. Now, of course, when something like this is claimed, it's extremely serious. So I'm going to break it down in detail. Okay, so who is this accusation from? It's from an anonymous burner account made the day of the accusation. I kept getting those 30 second ads, man. What the fuck? <laughs> Them ads are beating your ass. Which is interesting. So we don't know who. All right, this is, this is another allegation that I want to listen closely to. So let me lock in. Let me lock in. Let me lock in. But we do know who the victim is. Jamie, right? And how old did they say she was? They said 16 slash 17. Okay. So what else do we know about Jamie? They said she left the internet in 2020. So because they apparently can't, let me tell you who Jamie is. I follow Jamie on Twitter, which people quickly pointed to as proof. As you can see, Jamie is also followed by Skeppy, Verb, and Spifey, other YouTubers from the community. I met Jamie when I wasn't even- Doesn't matter. I just posted my first ever YouTube video less than a month before. I had less than 100 followers on Twitter the month that I met her. I made a lot of friends around this time because I wasn't a big creator and I was part of a lot of online communities as a fan. She played on Bad Boy Halo's Minecraft server and was a fan of Skeppy. I was trying to grow and make connections and I pretty much just made my Twitter account. So I made a lot of friends. Many people from this time I'm still friends with to this day. People claiming that me following her is proof that I sexed underage fans or groomed her at all is ridiculous. These claims are completely false. They were right about her age. She's 21 now, so she would have been around 17 four years ago. That's about the only correct thing they said this entire time. Like, so she was 17. 2020 as a convenient way to excuse any questions about her. Well, she didn't. She liked a tweet from last month, actively tweeted all of 2022, and she changed her bio and Twitter account name when this happened, just wanting to be left alone. That's interesting. And she actually tweeted saying she only privated her account because some of her IRL friends were finding it and she didn't want them to. I wonder why they lied about that. Maybe because the person who's claiming this doesn't know Jamie, doesn't know anything about Jamie, doesn't know me, doesn't know anything about me, and is being malicious and making up whatever they can ah! wait what what the where did that argument come from wait what wait hold up bro hold up. <laughs> now they're saying this person's not even the real jamie wait hold up bro did i miss something just wanting to be left alone that's interesting and she actually tweeted saying she only privated her account because some of her irl friends were finding it and she didn't want them to i wonder why they lied about that rewind rewind yeah hold up hold up hold up hold up hold up my nigga let me hear the let me hear the uh, the case again do, 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 do. on my on my phoenix right shit month actively tweeted all of 2022 and she changed her bio and Twitter account name when this happened just wanting to be left alone that's interesting and she actually tweeted saying she only privated her account because some of her IRL friends were finding it and she didn't want them to I wonder why they lied about that maybe because the person who's claiming this doesn't know Jamie doesn't know anything about Jamie doesn't know me doesn't know anything about me and is being malicious and making up whatever they can to end my career let's talk about some other stuff they also said they posted the videos with permission which of course makes the videos seem much more real well it's apparently me and I didn't give them permission and it's apparently sent to Jamie and she didn't give them permission she quit the internet she couldn't have they even critiqued Moist Critical for his video saying how terrible it was claiming that I admitted that the Snapchats were real which i never did in their original tweet they notably say when she that was a question that didn't say you did that said was dream admitting seems oddly specific just to remove the few people that would say well what if he didn't know her age when even in their own proof which is random discord messages with no context or who the messages even are in another part of their screenshot anonymous person number two says this but for some reason that's cropped out of their tweets because they don't even know what the screenshots they're using as evidence say they don't care about the truth they're just making things up as they go and because it's a claim against me people will just believe it they can say jamie left the internet no proof but i guess she did they say they got permission to post these videos I guess they did. They posted a video of Snapchats. Say it's mine. They never show the Snapchat profile or any proof that it's my Snapchat. But I guess you can't change your Snapchat name for free to anything at any time as many times as you want. So it must be dream. No more evidence needed. They're telling the truth. Even with what little context and evidence they have, they have to crop things and lie to try and hide the fact that they know nothing. But the burner seems so confident. They couldn't be being malicious. They even put in their bio that if Dream reached out, they would personally give him their information so that he could sue them because everything they were saying was 100% true. Oh, what? They, that's not in their bio anymore. That's that's weird. I wonder why they removed that. They did reveal who they got the original screenshots from. So let's see what that person has to say and why the burner was so confident in their claims. Quote, I don't know Jamie. I've never known her. I've never had a private or a public interaction with her at all. Unquote. Wow. Seems like they have a whole lot of information. So I reached out to them to try and find anything that I could find to find out what this was even about because I've never been confronted by one of my friends for grooming and I've never groomed anybody. So I found out who was anonymous in these messages and let's hear what they have to say. These screenshots are extremely out of context and use this ingenuity to tell a story about Dream that isn't true at all. I haven't spoken to Dream in a very long time. Oh, a my knowledge, he has not interacted with Hold up, with hold up, y'all. Hold up, y'all. It broke again. It broke again. They got another little girl. This nigga got another little girl. This nigga got another little girl. What is going on? It's the same girl. This nigga, who, how much did she get paid for this video, bro? Yet another minor. So everybody you come into contact with just, just, just so happens to be a little girl, but you didn't do nothing with none of them. Underage fans inappropriately or in any way that could be considered grooming. These DMs were posted by the burner without my permission and without ever contacting me beforehand. They were sent to the burner. Is that Jamie talking? What? By a vulnerable person that was upset and being taken advantage of while under the influence of alcohol. I want to be anonymous and stay completely out of this because all the terrible stuff I've seen happen to everyone mentioned on both sides is very scary. This conversation was private in my life and no one deserves to have their personal life dug through because of anonymous people making false claims without knowledge or context. 
context about anything they're saying. This person was not involved at all. Did not consent to anything. Now, if how did you even find out who the fuck it was? Did you analyze their texting patterns, nigga? What? How would you possibly even find out who that was? And we're just supposed to believe that this random ass woman talking is who the fuck is in these messages? It's like every single argument that he's saying like, oh, we don't actually know if that's a fact. They could have been making this shit up easily. They could have been just doing it. They could have just grabbed some random nigga to say stuff like this. Like, bro, do you not realize we can say the same exact thing about you? Bro, use the Dragon Balls to find out who it was? Like, how? How did you find that out? How? There's no legit evidence he's trying to make? Exactly, bro. And it's like, I know nobody in here is genuinely just fucking trying to hate cancel this nigga. Maybe Cowman and maybe Fair because they said they want that nigga to off himself. But like everybody else in here, I'm sure we're looking at this shit from like just a, a, a neutral point of view, bro. What the fuck? Did the nigga always speed and finally pull up on my ass? What is going on? I am, I am. Me too. Alright, okay, so there's a... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, he going crazy. He going crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I really don't want you to crash, sir. <laughs> I apologize. Dream is outside. <laughs> what the fuck? Dream is here. Dream is here. Hey, Dream, my nigga. Actually, no, fuck you, nigga. I don't care, bro. I don't care, bro. Hey, Dream, suck my dick to the stick part, nigga, bro. Absolutely not, my nigga. Hell oh, nah, bro. You stay in your garage. <laughs> nigga, I'm in the garage, bro. They're not in my garage. I'm already here. 2% allegations, 98% little girls yapping nonsense. If you're a little confused, I am too. This is a burner account making up things. Their story makes no sense. Can anybody actually like tell me like a reasonable way that he could have found out who was sending these messages? If the person that is responding, the only other person inside this conversation is apparently this burner account that won't talk to anybody. Yes, there is a way. Why is there context? Why is there context in DMs? To clarify what we were saying, either this person lied to us about the allegations being true, sent us a fake proof, then gave us permission to post it for whatever reason, or they lied to Dream's response video about the allegations being false, about the allegations being true. What does that mean? What? How did he find that out? Yeah, just in case. I don't know. What the fuck you're sending me? What does that mean? They lied to both Dream and the burner? The girl in the video? How did he... I'm saying how the fuck did he find out who that was? They lied to both? Oh my god. I just... I hate these cases where niggas just get away with shit because people are fucking stupid, man. I hate this shit, bro. It's like this nigga just got scotch free of everything because niggas be deleting shit and just lie. Her name is Sam. What the fuck? I propose we... No, I don't propose that. I don't propose that. Now, if you're a little confused, I am too. This is a burner account making up things. Their story makes no sense. Okay, so let's just summarize this. This allegation is not from a victim. It is from an anonymous Twitter account that was made the same day as the allegation. This anonymous person claims that I groomed a girl named Jamie. They did not ever contact Jamie. They did not know Jamie. They got none of their information from Jamie. They even incorrectly said that she quit the internet years ago when she's still active to this day. They posted videos claiming to be from me to a minor. They never showed proof that it was from me or my Snapchat profile. They never showed proof of who it was to. They cropped contacts from screenshots, lied publicly, and said I admitted the videos were from me. They falsely alluded to the fact that the victim gave them permission and ended up causing massive harassment and terror to Jamie, who they said was a victim of mine. The person in the screenshots claims that I'm not a groomer, that they're extremely out of context, and that the burner doesn't even know what was being discussed, and that now their personal life is being dug into due to an anonymous burner account. On top of that, no one even taps to open the Snapchat. There's no finger, you can't open snaps with a button, but it doesn't even matter because you can see that no buttons were pressed. So how did it open? Nobody touches the screen. You can't open a Snapchat what? without tapping the button to open. Open it. 
So ignoring the fact that there's no proof it's even me, how is this video even real? How did it open? The video doesn't even make sense. People have also pointed out that frames are missing and that the normal Snapchat animation doesn't play at all. But despite all of that, hardly anyone asked any questions. If you replied asking any questions, you got called a groomer supporter. Despite the fact that the proof was a video of a video of a video from screenshots of DMs of screenshots of DMs. You have to go four people deep to find anyone that has ever talked to Jamie. I'm not even in any of these screenshots. And the video of the video of the video has like 10 frames where you see the name Dream. Most people spreading this did zero research. But wait, they reported me. Oh my god, man. It's just like you... If you are a lawyer on this case, fighting against Dream, it's just like... You would really be asking the defendant, like, bro, why, why did you move this way up to this point? Did you even want to really incriminate this nigga? Like, y'all niggas just chose the worst way possible to try to fucking incriminate this nigga, bro. And now he is, he made a video that was basically good enough to escape all allegations. Like, that's basically what this video is, bro. It's like, he reached the bare minimum. That was like, now niggas can't really question it or else we look like we're... I mean, I don't give a fuck about looking like I'm hating. I really don't give a fuck, bro. But like, this nigga talked so much, yapped so much, gave the bare minimum on all evidence, attacked the other niggas so much, used his fans to gather evidence and stuff and reasons and frame data for him. That it's just like, you can't like... Fuck, man. It's just like everybody deleted so much shit that this entire video is a goddamn gray area. Holy shit. I'm built like Dream. I'm not built like that fat ass bastard. Analyzing frame data is reaching, not gonna lie. This is like the part in Ace Attorney where we call the witness and they just start making up random shit exactly, bro. This is like this is like the part in Ace Attorney where they brought a fucking parrot out. And niggas are just like, what is what is happening right now? These niggas brought out a fucking bird? Ain't no way, bro. Bro, really analyze the frames? Grabbing fans in a bad way is to get evidence because of even if they are, this lying is still biased? Exactly, bro. It's like everybody in this video is used as bias. Nigga called his mom. Mom, how many times did I leave the house in 2021? Um, I think three. And all three times were to go to the dentist. And one was to go to get it. Like, nigga, what? I love you. Oh my God, man. This nigga. The problem is the people accuse him backpedaling delete shit. That's what I'm saying. It's like there's so much missing shit because niggas get scared and delete everything. And Dream deletes the rest of it. So it's like all we have is like fucking just missing bits and pieces, bro. Like when Ezra brought out the second autopsy report and that shit was fake and he printed it with a Crayola construction paper. Yeah, exactly. This nigga got Edgeworth as his fucking prosecutor. Nigga just making shit up and putting evidence out. Like, nigga, what is this? Where'd you get this from? Whose voice is that? Apparently, Mudahar said the dream video was good. It's not a good video at all, bro. This is a terrible video. He just, he reached the bare minimum. This nigga, a bare minimum boy. Like, he barely reached this shit. This nigga, this nigga, I don't even know how to explain this shit, bro. Holy fuck, man. This shit just pissed me off so bad, bro. Exactly, a bare minimum boy, a bare minimum boy. Ain't no fucking, like, I've, ne I've, I've really never been mad on stream before, bro. It's just like this nigga, I hate when niggas get away with shit that they clearly fucking did, bro. Because I know, I know it, I know if a fucking, if I did some shit like this, I'd be immediately like, oh, shut the fuck up, you ain't listening, bro. Like, god damn, but it's just like, this nigga, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna bring race into this shit, bro. But y'all know what the fuck white niggas be doing and what the fuck they be getting away with. Yeah, not gonna lie, we not knowing too much shit because both sides just lying way too much. Exactly, bro, exactly, bro. Holy shit, man. This nigga, he got away with it. I mean, this video is long enough to the point where most niggas, what the fuck is this? Uh! Nigga, is that Kanye West graduation? Like, this is what I be talking about, bro. What is this? Who was in the video? NWA? Just heard before this in this video. When this tweet dropped, people were celebrating in the replies. Celebrating in the replies of a tweet that's supposed to be about a child being sexually abused. That is not okay. And just shows that you actually don't care about victims, about this. You just care about taking down Dream, which is the same thing the...
Now he's using the replies of a tweet to fucking battle back against pedophilia allegations, bro. Shaw, I appreciate the 5,000 bitties, you big pocket ass nigga. Can you show the YouTube comments? I think he used like the guilt trip as fans on his signs. Exactly. That's why I said eat those. And I saw a bitch ass nigga said, what eat those got to do with this? Eat those means you're applying. It's either eat those. It's one of the fucking things, nigga. I don't know. I've barely passed high school. Either eat those, pay those, or logos means applying to emotion, my nigga. Trying to get niggas to feel sad for you. It's one of those goddamn things, bro. Pathos, yeah, that shit, that shit, that shit. It means he's trying to get niggas on his side by feeling bad for him. That's why the nigga called his fucking mom up inside. Love you at the end of it. Like, no way you kept that fucking part in, bro. No, it's not. Logos is logic. Nigga, fuck logic. And Bobby Tarantino too, nigga. Burner account cares about. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about what's real. They care about saying whatever they can to ruin my career. They don't care about victims. They don't care about Jamie. And if you still don't believe me, let's hear a statement from Jamie herself, who seemed terrified. Didn't want no fucking way this nigga got another girl's voice, man. Anything affecting her real life wasn't a victim before, but is now due to all the harassment and people spreading sexual things about her without her knowledge or consent. My name is Jamie. I want to make it very clear. What? I definitely am. Not a victim of dream. I don't know how or why people are using my name and information without having ever asked me if any of it's true. Everything claiming to be about me was posted without my consent. Leave me alone. I want nothing to do with this. I've been getting harassed by people either saying I'm looking for attention or digging through my life trying to confirm things I want nothing to do with. Leave me alone. Jamie's Twitter account got locked for suspicious activity after she was blocking all of her friends, so none of them would see the things being said online about her. She didn't quit the internet in 2020, like the burner claimed, but she probably will now. She had to change all of her social media ads, and people were messaging friends of hers, all because an anonymous person made a claim on her behalf without even knowing if it's true, spreading sexual stories about her as a minor. I'm done with this shit, bro. I'm actually genuinely done with this shit. I'm gonna look at the comment section, but I'm done watching this video. Hey, sorry for the niggas that were actually genuinely interested in watching this, bro. But I just, I literally can't do it anymore, bro. Look at the end. What, what else is there to fucking see, bro? Creating victims in the process. Hope it was worth it. So I'm sorry, Jamie. Anyways, I tweeted when I first saw this claim, pointing a finger at someone that I thought was behind the burner account. I was messaged by multiple friends with proof linking them to the account. They were the only non-anonymous name on any of the screenshots. I have a massive dislike for me, and were actively replying to the allegation. So my obvious. What part? What part? I really ain't got nothing else to say about this nigga, bro. Like, genuinely. Genuinely. I just wish that whatever team somehow fucking catches this nigga in the act on some EDP shit, I pray to God I'm a part of that fucking team somehow. Conclusion? Won't be that way for long. Okay, XQC. I know you're probably watching this. I want you to address this. What do you have to say for yourself? It's irrefutable proof. Look. What? and ruin people's lives, hundreds of jobs, families, not even just when it's me. It may only be a trend in the Minecraft space right now, but it won't be that way for long. Okay, XQC, I know you're probably watching this. I want you to address this. What do you have to say? Yo, can't stop thinking about you. Like, it's bad. I know you don't want to bring up Lil Nas X party again, but I know I need to be your gag daddy. Check Snap. I know he's doing the whole thing that's like, yo, look how easy you can fake messages. But once again, the argument can be used against you, you dumbass nigga. Look how easy you can just type up a fucking dumbass message and read it yourself. Look at how easy you can just bring a girl and be like, yo, here's 30 bucks. Say this for me. Like everything can be used against you, you dumbass nigga. If yourself, it's irrefutable proof. Look, here it is on a second phone. Prove to me you didn't send me this video. What the fuck? I'm not trying to hear that fucking... Oh my god, man. Stop! Or, you're perfect. Forever. And everyone watching this will now know it. Or Pokemon, you've been getting some hate for your cookie prices recently. And I don't mean to expose you, but you did say this to me. And I think that's disgusting. What do you have to say for yourself? What more proof do you need? I also have the cookies she sent me and a signed note from her. This is irrefutable evidence. You get the point. I made all those pieces of evidence in 10 minutes with only free programs. What's stopping anyone from going and making a fresh account, faking evidence, and then accusing a person they hate of something? What's stopping anyone from me paying Whoop Panda to say, Panda, yo, say this for me. Yo, Fair, say this for me. Yo, Innis, say this for me. 
Yo, Rain, say this for me. Like, you've been using the entire fucking video. The only evidence you had against any of these fucking proof is you bringing in some random ass nigga that we never fucking heard of ever. And them saying the same thing. Like, you're, we can use the same argument against you. That's why I'm saying this video is too many fucking gray areas, bro. This whole, like, this whole video was him leading up to him basically being like, yo, look how easy it is to fake stuff. Nigga, <laughs> we know. We know you know how to fake stuff. You've been doing it the entire video. Holy shit, bro. He was like, this one about to get him. This one about to get him. Like, no, bro. I'm not an idiot. God damn, bro. Vile. Be careful what you believe and ask questions. Believing real victims is important, but not believing fake victims is very important to real victims too. As for my conclusion on this video, I have a couple things to say. First of all, I just want to recognize that I'm probably in this position because of myself. The people that made these claims undoubtedly had unhealthy parasocial relationships with me, and that's why it's gotten to this point. So nigga just innocent on every single count. That's what I'm saying. How do you know who's a fake victim, nigga? The Uber driver genuinely had good advice. Honestly, just a lesson for me to, about how scary having anything on the internet is. Dude, the unfaced reveal thing had me so baffled. This Uber driver needs an award. This is a well put video, to be honest. I respect this. This shouldn't have needed to be executed perfectly. The fact that only three million people have seen this video in nearly 24 hours is compared to the millions who've driven blindly to false accusations. Love how 99% of all the drama can be avoided just by not being on Twitter, LMAO. Like, oh my fucking God, bro. Hey, let me just end this off on this. This is actual, genuine words from me, Apollo, speaking to you niggas. If I ever have some crazy allegations come out of my name that are solid, foolproof evidence, and I release a lackluster response in any way, shape, or form, do not go to my comment section saying that you, oh, and he's, he's not a bad guy. Oh, this made sense. Oh, this is actually very good. No, nigga. Don't protect me. If there are foolproof allegations against me, and I have no refutable evidence, but a black screen with a voice speaking on it, nigga, don't jump on my side, bro. Don't jump on my side or else you're just going to look corny like these niggas inside the fucking comment section. Talking about avoiding Twitter drama. What are you speaking about right now, bro? Oh my God. Don't protect me. Do not protect me. Only if I fucking rebuke back with the most solid, airproof, airtight case. Like, nigga, that shit did not fucking happen. Then protect me, nigga. But if I respond back basically, like, in a way that you, like, nah, that nigga did that shit. Holy shit. Well, we went to Mexico together. Has Mudahar made a video on this? No, but I'm sure he was. When I drop my one hour and 30 minute expose video on you, it's over for your bitch ass. And I'm going to easily go in there and refute everything I fucking did, my nigga. <laughs> You're done for. Can we please react to the Discord dream face reveal? <laughs> nah, that, that'd just be a fucking undercut to everything we saw inside this video, bro. We should start fake controversy to see how well you can refute it. Let's not do that. That That is not an excuse for one of you niggas to go and make a fucking fake ass video about me, bro. That is not an excuse for that. Absolutely fucking not. Apollo called me a slur. <laughs> Maybe. That is wild. We about to catch Apollo like EDP. I'm not even talking about me saying like a slur or some shit, bro. Because I'm sure everybody in this fucking chat has said a slur in some way, shape, or form. I be saying the hard R 30 times a day, nigga. <laughs> Just off video. I'm talking about some like something like unescapable. Like children stuff. Uh... Grape, like something that's like just insane that you cannot ever come back from. Like that stuff is, if that ever happens, my nigga, it's not going to, of course. I'm not a weird ass nigga. And I'm just saying, don't protect me. We've all said some crazy shit. I didn't think I would ever make this video ass nigga. Dildo in your ass. Oh, I know someone who said something insane about robot. Apollo's never lied. We all have said slurs, nigga. Everybody inside this entire chat has said some questionable ass shit one day. 
That's why, like, that's why I really don't care if somebody catches me on some fucking just wild shit. Because the nigga that sent me the Maya videos, bro. The niggas that sent me the Pokemon videos, bro. I, I said all that. I don't give a fuck, bro. And I, I had a chance to edit it out, my nigga. If I didn't, if I didn't care that much for it to be in the video, bro, I don't care about getting canceled by it, quote unquote. If I didn't care that much to delete the stream and act like it never fucking happened, then I don't care about getting canceled about it, my nigga, because that's just fucking a video game, nigga. I'm speaking about a video game. I'm not doing real life shit that's just like, damn, I'm looking at that nigga different now because he did that. No, nigga. I said a Pokemon character was cute, an 8-bit character. Cancel Pollo for being real. You post the VOD, I missed the stream. Eight. <laughs> All right, bro. Uh, yeah, I'll post the VOD. I'll probably end up uploading this video tonight on the second channel. Actually, no, I'll probably... uh, Fuck, I gotta upload the Santa Claus video, too. Uh, We'll see what the fuck happens. Within the next two days, both these videos will be out. The St. Nicholas stream and this stream will both be on the second channel within the next two days. It's not Fuck Mudahar. Um, I want to see Mudahar's actual video. I don't think he's actually released anything yet. I Ladies do watch gentlemen. Mudahar, so he's in my recommended. Um, and it seems that he hasn't dropped a dream video yet. So we'll see what the fuck happens when he actually drops that and speaks his true fucking shit on it. It is fuck dream, though. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely. I'm not talking about the YouTuber. I'm just saying that I hate dreaming at night, so it's fuck my dreams. It's fuck my dreams. Yes, sir, bro. It's fuck dream in that way, shit, or form, bro. I hate my dreams. I'm real shit. I wish my dreams would go off. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. Uh, let's see. Good morning, Poyo. What's up, my nigga Mogo? It's not morning time, though, bro. Yeah, fuck my dreams. Fuck my dreams. 1,000%, bro. You hate milk? <laughs> M-O-K. What the fuck? Well... Um, how did y'all niggas feel about the video? I won't end it quite yet. How did y'all feel about the entire video? Like, genuinely. Do y'all niggas think, I mean, I won't judge you. Everybody can say whatever the fuck they want to say. Do y'all think he actually had any refutable, like, oh, that actually, that actually was a pretty good response. This nigga dream guilty, ass, dream comeback, trust, holy glaze. He was lying, innocent. It was so bad. What we talking about? Mo, get your ass out! Fuck no, bro. Didn't say shit. The only good response was the Snapchat video not opening. The app session, I agree with you. It was just filled with a lot of gray areas. Yeah, I think all in all, that's kind of the best way to put this shit is that you really can't Say this nigga didn't do anything. You can't say this nigga did do anything because so many people deleted their fucking responses and DMs and texts and Snapchats and recorded a video of a video of a video. Like, there's just so much shit that was going on inside these responses that you really don't know what the fuck happened, bro. I mean, like, like I said, you don't get accused of 20 things and be innocent of all 20, my nigga. You guilty of about three of them if you accuse for 20 on some real shit, bro. You're not guilty. You're not innocent of everything. Nigga show black picture with words and his story full of holes so we can't tell which one is telling the truth exactly, bro, exactly. Like, you really never fucking know, unfortunately.